Today's guest is Nick Hayden. He has a consulting firm, Alderman Hayden, where he helps e-commerce companies build resilient websites. He also has a YouTube channel called Coder Size, which uh, produces content on being the best engineering manager that you can be, which is really a unique take, right? Uh, and Nick and I talked a little bit about this before, about you know, uh, instead of being focused on coding, it's focused on the management side of that, which I think is very interesting. So thanks for joining me today, Nick. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Good to be so here. For those who have not met you, had a chance to interact with you, talk about yourself, uh, share about your background, where you're from, who you are, and what you do. Yeah, great. Um, so my name's Nick Hayden. I'm in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, software engineer by trade. I've been doing that for probably 11, 12 years now, and most recently looking to go into that more management space and helping really build effective teams and um studying a bit more of that as well in my work. So I've been doing the YouTube channel, help a consult both on the e-commerce side and then also um, the engineering leadership. How can you uh, take a team you've got currently, make them more effective? Mm -hmm. um, prior to this, I was I was working at Linktree, so engineering manager there, managing teams of you know that 10 to 15 size, uh, doing all sorts of different projects, uh, particularly building like tools for external developers to build into the platform, which uh, if you've ever built tools for developers, there are a uh, very particular audience <laughs> and uh you know of course there's a lot of things that come along with that in terms of documentation and everything else that's interesting so let's let's roll the clock back um so mm -hmm. as you were finishing high school and thinking about what to do next what what was that for you what what did you go to university did you go straight into job force well so i in high school i started to code um I, I have a really like core memory of trying to figure out uh, how to write C++ and I would write hello world and I would double click on the exe like you double click on every other application <laughs> and it would open and close and I'm like, how do I get this damn thing to open? <laughs> so that led me to JavaScript because I could see it in the browser <laughs> and I could, uh, I could figure it out. I didn't need to use a CLI. Um, and so I was doing that and I'm, and I'm learning to code and sort of figuring this stuff out. For whatever reason, I didn't choose to do that at university. Um, I originally enrolled in an industrial design course. Uh, I actually, thinking back, I'm actually not sure where that came from. Um, <laughs> just one of those things like, you gotta go pick a course. Um, I think what it probably was is at the time, uh, computer science was probably the only degree available, at least at the universities uh, near, my, near where I live. And they had a lot of uh, like math uh, prerequisites that I didn't have. Mm. I've, I've come to enjoy math later in life, but at the time I certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> uh, so I went to this industrial design course. I did it for about two or three weeks and dropped out before the, the census date, before the fees were due. Um, <laughs> so I could get out. At this time, I'm like working, working at Bunnings, which is like a Home Depot kind of thing, just like pushing trolleys in the car park. And I'm like, man, I don't want to do this forever. But like, can I can I do this computer thing? Like, what does what does that look like? Um, so I enroll in something, and we've got an Australia called TAFE, which is uh, tertiary and further education. I think basically it sits between high school and university. Okay. And I enrolled into that. They had a, a software development web development course, and so I did this. Uh, and while this is going on, I'm like really active on IRC and these like tech forums and everything, and I'm like seeing all this cool stuff that's happening. That, like all these California tech companies. And I'm like, man, I like, I want to do this stuff. This is where I want to be. Um, but I'm at TAFE and I'm not experiencing that. Like we're learning really basic stuff. We're doing like XML into a website. I'm like, oh, this is like not what I want to be doing. Um, so I study really hard. I do really well. Um, and my first job was at a, a place called the Australian Science and Math School, which is just like a high school. And it was, the title was online content coordinator. And I got this job because they they asked the TAFE, they're like, do you have anyone, any students in your course that could come and work for us, like a part-time job? Uh, so I applied, I get the job, I'm like stoked. Uh, I don't know if maybe you had the same experience when you entered the, the industry, but you kind of sit down at your office on the first day and you're like, what do I do? <laughs> right. Do I sit here? <laughs> like <laughs> uh, that real feeling, because I because I've been doing like, labor work i'm like what do i like where am i going <laughs> what do i what do i push um and so i stayed there for three years uh it was my manager at the time was fantastic um and i still like reference back to him 
in my mind, like on on ways to interact with people. But he, so his name was Craig Osmond. I'll give him a shout out. He was awesome for like uh, just trusting me with things, perhaps too much um, at the time. But uh, yeah, it was like always keen to, um, yeah, just like if I had an idea, it'd be like, yeah, try it out, like see what happens. Um, and we were just doing like small applications for the school, updating the website, the really minor pieces um but he had a, a way to make it feel like it was really impactful work and then also give me the confidence to actually try some of this stuff which is yeah fantastic big deal yeah it's a big deal yeah it is um so that was yeah this is me getting into the industry and i stay there for three years and i'm still on like irc and i'm still reading all these like you know, reddit's popular at the time and i'm like reading all this stuff i'm like cool i gotta like keep going you know i can't i can't stop it stop here <clears throat> so i go i quit the sms after three years i go to uh another like small sort of startup kind of thing in in adelaide uh, which city i'm from not a tech city yeah it would i don't know it's like my wife's american she's like oh yeah you live in like the midwest equivalent um okay uh, <laughs> so we uh, I'm at CDS. We are building like a CRM product for not for profits. Yeah, nothing too groundbreaking. And it was like uh, editing an existing tool rather than actually like building stuff. <clears throat> Stayed there for about three months. And during this time, this is like an important uh, event. So during this time, like Easter comes up. In Australia, we've got like a five day break over Easter. Oh. I'm like, I'm going to go to Bali. Um, our equivalent of, of your Cancun, I think. Um, and so I go to Bali for the weekend. I'm in this hostel and I end up meeting my now wife there. So she's from California, uh, totally unplanned. The reason we met is because we were in a, a dorm room and everyone else spoke German. So we were the only English speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, we're talking, we, we meet each other. She was living in Melbourne at the time. She'd only just moved there. Um, I... She came with me in Adelaide. I went to visit her in Melbourne. While I'm in Melbourne, she's like, oh, you should meet a recruiter, see what the industry is like. Mm -hmm. And coming from Adelaide, going to Melbourne is, uh, yeah, Adelaide's like a city of 1 million people. Melbourne's like 6 million. Right. So it's like this big place you're going to and it's, you know, big tall skyscrapers and everything. I'm like, great. I'm going to meet recruiters and I'm going to see what's out in the world. I meet a recruiter and they're like, hey, do you want to interview on, I think it was like a Thursday. Do you want to interview on Thursday? I'm like, yep, great. I go interview at this agency. And then they call me on Friday afternoon. And they're like, hey, they loved you. Can you start Monday? Oh, and wow. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can. <laughs> and I just took the risk. I just went for it. Um, and then I ended up contracting here for like seven or eight years. Um, and then, yeah, I've gone into, into management since. But it was just like a real... Uh, just a lucky step from like, yeah, I'll go see this girl in Melbourne to <laughs> I've developed a whole career and I've got a house now. I've got all of it. I live here now. Um, yeah. So that was, that's like step one of the journey. It's, um, it was a big one. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty, that's actually pretty amazing, right? That odds of that happening. Uh, I, you know, I talked to a lot of people about, about their careers and, luck factors so much into our careers, right? Like we're, not, we're not smart enough to craft what our career would really be when we're young. Uh, we just take what, what we got, the opportunities that we get. So that's interesting. So did in that eight years then, uh, did that give you an opportunity to, to even, cause you know, you did three years at the first job, eight years at this job, I'm assuming then that really, and you said you kind of transitioned a little to management that really got you, your background and skills and knowledge in this field. So uh, the last eight years have actually been nearly all contracting. Like ah, very okay. short term, three to six months. Um, I've gone back to a few places again okay. and again. Uh, so my my first one was Leo Burnett, uh, an advertising agency. Uh, they're global, but they have an office in Melbourne. Um, building out some apps, some websites, that sort of stuff. And then I would just follow sort of where the work went. Um, so I would contract for the shortest contract I ever did was three days. <laughs> and that was like, I got a call and they're like, hey, we've got two really tiny websites we need to be done by the end of the week. Can you come in and do them? And it was like, they're around the corner from my house, so it wasn't too bad. I didn't have to commute anywhere. <laughs> um, and then 
Yeah, like I've had all sorts of contracts, like government, um, massive, uh, like accounting firms, all of this, and then right down to these tiny little, you know, three or four person uh, agencies. Um, what I, yeah, yeah, right, that's just really awesome. Yeah. yeah, what I love about it is, particularly now that I'm going into more management tasks, is you get a, a great sense of like the different ways people work. I think if you work at one job for 10 years, you'd be like, great, I know this company really well. Mm -hmm. When you are doing contracting like that, I'm like, this manager's not good because of you know these reasons. This one's great because of these mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and you see like all the different ways teams interact and um, because you're never there for that long, um, I never got caught up in like the politics of the role because you're not there enough to care. Um, but yeah, you get a, a great understanding of like how these companies work and you meet someone or you meet a company and they're like, yeah, we work agile. And then you go in there you're like, that's not agile. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go somewhere else you're like, oh, these guys are doing the same thing as these other ones. Like maybe there's something in it because they're both, you know, functioning businesses. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just like pick the pieces that I like over the last 10 years. No, that's that's a unique experience, right? To then to be be able to kind of get different types of projects, different types of clients. Um, cool. That certainly, I think, uh, sets you up well for then how do you interact in a new situation, right? Yeah, uh, totally. Like you've got to you've got to come into a team. You have to like one establish that you're trustworthy both as like a person and then in your in your skills. And no one likes the guy that like starts a new job, kicks in the door, like everything's bad. I'm going to change it all. Like nobody likes that guy. So don't be that guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there are times for it, but you should always like, you know, they've, uh, a thing particularly through contracting that I've learned is like no one intentionally does a bad job. Like things are generally the way they are at a company because of some thing that's happened over the years. So like if you understand that, you can stop it happening again in the future. Um, in terms of technical skills, one of the best things for contracting, I think, is the ability to do like a lot of in-place replacement of things. Um, when you're in a contract, they're never going to let you re rebuild the whole system. Hmm. They're like, hey, this thing's broken. We just need someone to fix it. <laughs> so you can come in, you're like, oh, okay, this thing's kind of janky. But like, I think if I do the Indiana Jones switch, like I can <laughs> make it a little bit better. Uh, and that's helped me a lot now where like I'll, I'll meet engineers. I have engineers on my team. They're like, no, we need to rebuild this whole thing. I'm like, well, what if we don't? What <laughs> if we try the Indiana Jones switch first? Uh, at least that gets us to a spot where we can then maybe look to rebuild it at a later time without uh, you know, whatever pressure we've got coming from elsewhere. It is amazing what a little refactoring can do, right? To a, to a project, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even even in my background, I've I've worked on very large projects, and even in very large projects, um, there are portions of the code you don't touch for years if they're working, and mm -hmm. then then you become afraid to touch them. And like you said, you have to do the Indiana Jones thing and hope it hope it works right. <laughs> Pull it out, put the new thing in, and go. Okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good, and you you just need to do it. Like I like looking at so many companies i've never worked somewhere that's like like i've never done like space or like defense or so i've never done something like where lives are on the line <laughs> and that's always been kind of like reassuring in a way i'm like like no one dies the thing goes down for half an like no one dies it's, it's inconvenient <laughs> and we don't like it but like you know <clears throat> we have to take risks at some point yeah there are industries you can't take risks in but most of mine you'll be okay <laughs> You so, have to pull the trigger at some point. So, uh, so you said you left the, you, know, you did the, the, the technical school basically in, in the United States would be a technical yep. school. Is that where you, is that the extent of the education you, you felt was necessary other than self-taught, right? You've done a lot of self teaching yeah. stuff. Um, has that worked out really well for you in, in your consulting career? Self teaching has been the best. I've learned more through my own self-education than I have uh, through TAFE or, or anything else. Um, I did go back to university recently. I've got the <laughs> the thing up on the wall. Nice. <laughs> um, so I went back uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, so my wife, she's American. Uh, prior to us being married, we were talking about going to the US. And I thought if I have a degree, that's at least gets me in the front door for interviews. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if I'm like a foreigner showing up, 
without a visa and I've got a, I don't even have a degree, you know, it's going to be much harder. It's like, I'll go back to university and I will study something. I'm looking at the degrees uh, at, available at different universities. And I'm like, what do I do? At the time I was getting really into cybersecurity uh, and I had some friends that were doing it and we're like, spending time like um, doing catch the flags and like doing yep. some exploits and all this. And this is really cool. This is what I want to do. So I enrolled at a university called Deakin University here. And the reason I chose Deakin is they have a really good online program. So it runs in tandem online in person. You go online, you can go in person. And the, the lectures are all recorded. Uh, and what that en enabled me to do is work full-time while studying, full-time. Yeah. And so I was able to get through it really quick. I didn't have to take time off work. The only time I did was exams, which were in person. Uh, but it really... Uh, yeah, I could have gone to maybe a more prestigious university, uh, but I would have had to like physically be there, which uh, you know is is the payoff worth it? And yeah, no, no I don't think <laughs> no, so. No, I mean either. at this point in your career, so. right? Uh, you've you've probably realized most people don't care what the name of the university is. <laughs> no, 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 it's it's really... a, honestly it's a checkbox half the time. It's like did they get this? Yes, which one? This one. Yeah, short of like, I don't know, you do like a PhD at Harvard and you're like, oh, okay, that person okay, right, right, clearly right. put the time in. <laughs> but for the, for the everyman, you know, who cares? Um, and the, and I don't want to disparage universities, but I never had it in my mind that it was like, I'm going to learn some secret knowledge there. There's not going to be some trick to software engineering and, and I study that one course and I've got it for life. Um, there's so much available information that... Uh, a lot of a lot of what I was learning at university, I kind of already knew, even in the security stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean, it was still worth it. I still met some great people, and that, that I actually ended up hiring some of my teams as well. Um, it was a little bit strange. I have like one project that sits in my mind; I, it pops into my head every so often, where we had to do like a group project, and it was it was a full year project. And there was a team of like maybe 10 of us on it, but everyone is like university students. <laughs> and we're like, how do you make tickets? Like, do we do agile? Do we do Kanban or scrum or what do we do? Uh, and that was a, I really tried to be like hands off for that. Cause I was like, I don't want to just like do it and be the, you know, be annoying about it. Um, but that was that was a really interesting way of like having a playground project to work on, where like ultimately like the university doesn't care if the project works or not; they just want to see you work as a group. Uh, so that was a really interesting project to like just play with some different styles and like you know what happens when uh, people don't have like an understanding of what project management looks like for an industry and like mm -hmm. what like what do they do? What do they come up with? Mm -hmm. Their tasks are not well defined. <laughs> no due date yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like what happen. people do. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's that is interesting. So, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm similar to you. I found that I went to I, I went back to university much later in my career. I went to technical certifications and then finally looped back around and said, eh, maybe I should do this because it could be useful for that one job that's going to require me to check the box, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I found that that was that was really the case. It was only it was only a check the box exercise. Um, so, all right. Well, so as you as you've gone through this, you, you've had such a varied uh, opportunity to interact with different companies and different uh, types of teams and size of projects. What's something you've witnessed that if we were to come to you, Nick, and say, "Hey, we, you know, uh, we want to change something. What will give us the best uh, bang for our buck, if you will, if we make this change? What might that change be the, for you?" Mm. If I could change something broad spectrum with software engineers in general, um, I'll, I'll pick on them for a moment. I'll find another target later. Um, <laughs> is really take the time to understand other fields. I think there is a an idea, particularly with people entering the industry, that like I'm a software engineer. I did one of the hardest courses at university. I'm an expert. Everyone else is an idiot. No one knows what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I think take the time to really understand uh, what other departments do, whether it's like marketing or sales or whoever. And then the follow-up for that is uh, get a good sense of how companies in general make money um, because that will really help you figure out what's important. 
Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, they're running a company because they want to make a profit. <laughs> um, yep. That's the, the, as simple as we get. Um, figuring out sort of what enables that, which doesn't mean like, oh, I've got to release a feature people pay for it because it can be like infrastructure. That's also important. But figuring out, okay, we make money, you know, we've got a free product, but we actually sell to businesses. We're like, all right, well, how can we align more to like that goal? How can we push more in that area? Um, that's what will really help people's career develop um, and mm. really help uh, show that like you've got that intelligence in the business. Um, that's probably my my first one. If I can have two, um, sure. My second. Um, I mean, we were talking about hiring before we jumped on. I think that's one that is tricky. Uh, I think a lot of people talk about, you know, people go from software engineering to management and they don't really know. There's not like a, a training or a step between. Um, and I think hiring is part of that. When I'm hiring, I look for like personality. Are you a good communicator? Um, I look for, can you talk like deeply and intelligently about previous projects? What went well, what didn't? And then uh, projects you're proud of, like why? And then also, what's the worst production issue you've had? Mm. The reason I ask those sort of questions is uh, you can't fake it. You can't rote memorize like you can a code test. If you've had a terrible production issue, it probably sits in your head forever. Right. And uh, you know, you've worked in the industry long enough, you have one. It's, it's impossible to avoid. And uh, that's the experience of like actually matters you know and mm -hmm. it's it's yeah we can hop onto leak code today do 100,000 exercises and we'll you know know some stuff yeah um, but to be like oh yeah i was working on this site and it crashed and no one knew why and it took me three days to fix it um like those are the battle scars that you want right. in your team those are the people you you want <laughs> and i found a line of code that was mine <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that thing i was telling them to replace six months ago <laughs> No, those are those are those are good changes. That's definitely that's definitely true. You're and, and I like your your point on software engineers needing to understand more than just their role. I think that um we kind of get we kind of get uh stovepiped, if you will, in IT careers, right? We have the the ops people who do customer service, we have the people who do cyber, we have the people who do you know coding, we have uh testers or whatever. But you know, to build your well-rounded career. And you found that through consulting, you need to have all these other kinds of interactions. So you better understand why you're doing what you're doing and how it's helping the per people you're doing. So I, I think it's a fantastic uh, suggestion for people who want to grow their career and not just be the developer. We go, oh, keep them in the room. We do not want that person to interact with anybody. Well, that's going to, st that's going to stifle the career, right? They've kind of already limited where they're going to go. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And like a follow-on for that is, um, don't let people define your career. If you're, mm -hmm. if you find that you're someone that's getting put in the back room because you don't, maybe you don't understand something right now, or like that maybe they don't think you're interested in it, but you are, go and learn and like involve yourself in those conversations. That might even mean getting a new job, uh, but like don't let, don't let someone else's ideas on how you work or what you do uh, define you. Like go out mm -hmm. and do your own stuff. Absolutely. So what's uh, what? Uh, talk a bit about your YouTube channel. What what was the kind of the thought pattern behind it in terms of creating it, and, and what kind of content are you producing? Yeah, so uh, I started the channel originally. It was just going to be like me writing some code, streaming stuff. I thought this would be fun. Um, but what I found doing it is there is a lot of uh, entry level content. So if you want to learn JavaScript, you know, there's there's a million tutorials you can do that today. You probably learn it by the end of the weekend. Um, and then there is some mid to senior content, but where you really lack is like mid to senior and senior to management. The technology industry now is at a point where we're not just like guys in the shed building stuff. It's actually full corporation, some of the most valuable companies on the planet. And the management of those teams is different to how we manage factories, how we manage physical labor, all of this. So uh, it's developing its own path. And that's really what I wanted to cover on the channel is uh, how I run things on my team. Um, it's my website, it's my channel, so I get to say what I want. Um, <laughs> um, I've had some people be like, that's not how I do it. I say, that's okay, you can make your own channel. Um, <laughs> so uh, 
really just sharing like my thoughts on how to run things like one-on-ones, how to manage like difficult conversations, how do you uh, do career development for your team. And the other source of, of content for my channel is anytime I get asked a question by a, a non-technical person in the business, uh, I will make a video on it. So I've got a cookie video up at the moment where uh, one of our lawyers, I was I was working with her on our uh, cookie policy and, and how we store data. And she's like, oh, well, like, what is a cookie? Like, like, is a cookie, does it always have something in it? I'm like, no, cookies this, cookies got, you know, uh, uh, name of value, all of this. I was like, I should just make it a video so like other people can learn as well. Um, oh, that's uh, get the, yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. idea. I mean, there's so many things that uh, technology people take for granted, right? Because we grew, you know, it's still not that old. Cookies aren't that old. Browsers are only from what, 90, early 90s. Uh, so mm. uh, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. And just like, cool, you've got this question. I bet other people do. Uh, and it helps me, it helps me get better answers for stuff when I can, uh, I'm forced to like research, like, why do we do it this way? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the goal with the channel at the moment. It's doing okay. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not huge yet, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Hey, it's a, it's an interesting, uh, set of content though, right? Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm a software engineer who moved into management and I didn't have anything like that. Right. So I made all the mistakes and something like what you're producing. I see a lot of value in that. If I had to go back and do it again, I absolutely would be looking on YouTube for somebody who talks about how to make that transition. Uh, it'd be, it'd be, it's yeah, that's critically important for people who want to grow their career. So good on you. Thank you yeah. very much for producing that content. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, so Nick, what's uh, next a, for you? What's what's coming up in the near future? Um, so, doing the consulting thing at the moment. So, um, just working with some smaller brands in Melbourne to just like uplift some of their e-commerce sites. So, I'd, part of my contracting I was talking about before, a lot of that was in e-commerce. Uh, so, yeah, doing that both on the software engineering side and then also looking at for places that have existing tech teams. Can I help uplift some of their management skills as well? Um, my other little side project, I have a little baby e-commerce side of my own called Juice to BJJ, uh, where I sell some like t-shirts and rash guards and stuff. But um, you just see, that's my little like playground for e-commerce ideas. Um, so yeah, playing around in that space at the moment. Um, and yeah, just seeing seeing what's out there in the world, really. Just, uh, yeah, that's that's the bulk of it. Awesome. Well, Nick, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. Uh, thank you for sharing about your unique perspective uh, when it comes to that transition and doing engineering management correct. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the content you produce and what you, what's next for you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for your time.